In this video, we are going to look at proportions. And I did a, a video on introduction to ratios, so if you need a review of ratios, you might go watch that. Um, because a proportion uses ratios or rates, and a proportion is different than a ratio and a rate because a proportion is an equation. So this is a key fact right here. A proportion is an equation, where a ratio is not an equation. A ratio is just a fraction. Um, so a proportion is an equation that says a ratio equals a ratio or a rate equals a rate. So let's look at this first example here. It says a recipe calls for three cups of flour and two cups of sugar. If the recipe is doubled, we will use six cups of flour and four cups of sugar. Write a proportion using the ratio of flour to sugar. So what we're saying here with this proportion is that a ratio equals a ratio. And this is just practicing writing a proportion. We're not solving for anything. Um, there's nothing that's being you know, asked to, to be found. You know, Find the number of cups of whatever. We'll do that in a minute. We're just practicing what a proportion looks like. So the ratio of flour to sugar, um, if we look at the first recipe, calls for three cups of flour. Three cups of flour to two cups of sugar. All right, so there's our first ratio. And if we double the recipe, we'll use six cups of flour to four cups of sugar. So a proportion would say that these two things are equal, and hopefully you can see that, that those two fractions are definitely equal to each other. Um, just as a quick review, a ratio is going to compare something with the same unit. So we're using cups and cups here. In a minute, we'll look at a rate, and these labels here might be different. Right? Like it, we're going to do miles per hour, and that would be a rate. So technically, you could actually cancel these similar units out, and we get 3 is to 2 as 6 is to 4. And you know, hopefully you could see that this is true, but maybe sometimes it will be harder to see that it's true. So a, uh, a couple methods to see that these two sides are equal to each other. You could reduce the fraction. So 6 fourths reduces down to 3 halves, so 3 halves equals 3 halves. And another uh, property that you're going to use a lot when you start solving is this idea of um, sort of a cross product, I guess you'd call it. So this, if I multiply these two things together and I multiply those two things together, um, is equal, right? 2 times 6 is 12 and 3 times 4 is 12. And so that tells me that this fraction equals this fraction. Now, why is that, all right? Why does that cross product thing work? Well, Let's look at that, because to me that's important. A lot of people use this cross product business and they don't really know why it works. So let's say we have a proportion. So if we have a proportion, we're going to have a fraction equals a fraction. That's basically what a proportion looks like. A is to B is C is to D. So let's use a little bit of algebra here. And let's multiply both sides by B times D. Now certainly that's legal, right? You can multiply both sides of the equation by whatever you want. Now why am I doing that? Well, I'm doing that because I want to cancel these denominators, all right? So I multiplied by B, so I could cancel this B with this B, and I multiplied both sides by the D, so I could cancel this D with this D. So what do I end up with? On the left-hand side, I end up with A times D, and on the right hand, I end up with B times C. I'm just putting them in alphabetical order. You could say C, B if you want to. All right, so what did I just show there? What did I just show? I just showed that if I start with A over B equals C over D, if I start with this, then this will always be true. Well, what is that? A times D is this cross product right here, right? A times D. What is B times C? It's this times that. So that will be true. Um, you know, so I basically proved that if you start with this proportion, that the product of the diagonals will always be equal. That's what this says. The product of the diagonals will be equal. Okay, so we can use that when we're solving or checking to see if things are indeed proportional. All right, I'm going to get rid of that. So now let's look at solving a problem here. Let's see. So let's do this same recipe business, except now there's something that we don't know. A recipe calls for three cups of flour and two cups of sugar, so we have the same recipe here. If we use 13 cups of flour, how many cups of sugar should we use? So now there's something that we don't know that we need to solve for. So we're going to set up the ratio the same way. I, I did flour to sugar. You could do sugar to flour. You just need to be consistent, all right? So if you do 
Um, let's do flour to sugar. So we'll do cups of flour. And sometimes it helps to write this down to help yourself keep track because one of the big mistakes students make is um, flipping these upside down on one of their ratios, not being consistent. All right, so if I go flour over sugar, then I have to go three cups of flour over two cups of sugar equals 13 cups of flour. So I have to put that in the, in the numerator to be consistent over how many cups of sugar. So now I have a variable. I don't know how many. I purposefully picked a number here that's not a nice multiple of three, right? So it's a little bit harder to do in our in your head. So there's a couple different ways to solve this, but I think probably with proportions, the easiest way to solve it is to use this cross product property we just learned. And maybe it would help to leave that up here. All right, so we know if we have a proportion, if A is to B as C is to D, then we can say that A times D equals B times C. So we can say that 3 times X equals 2 times 13. So on the next line, we're going to say 3 times X equals 2 times 13, which is 26. All right, so now we just use a, some simple algebra and solve that. Divide both sides by 3, and we get whatever we get. What do we get? Um, 8 would be 24, so that'd be 2 left over. So 8 and 2 thirds cups of sugar is what we need. All right, so that was using a ratio, cups to cups. Okay, let's look at um, rates. Let's get rid of this. Get rid of this. Rates are going to work pretty much the same way, except you're going to have different um, labels. All right, so in three hours, Tom can bike 33 miles. At that rate, he can bike 66 miles in six hours. Write a proportion using Tom's rate in miles per hour. Again, we're not solving for anything on this one. We know all the information. We're just trying to practice writing a proportion. So we're going to write a fraction. In this case, we have a rate equals a rate, and we're going to do it in miles per hour. So that means we're going to do miles over hours. You can think of per in this rate context as meaning divide. So if you want to find miles per hour, miles divided by hours. If you want to find words per minute, words divided by minute. Um, miles per gallon, you know, there's all kinds of different rates that you could come across in these problems. All right, so in three hours, he can bike 33 miles. So I'm going to say 33 miles over, and he can do that in three hours. So that's a rate, 33 miles in three hours. If I reduce this down, I'll get 11 miles per hour. At that rate, he could bike 66 miles in six hours. So to actually write a proportion, remember you have to write an equation. So this thing right here is a proportion. This whole equation is a proportion. I know this is true because if I reduce this down, I get 11 miles, and we could write it like this, miles per hour equals 11 miles per hour. All right, so these are proportional. These rates are equivalent, all right? So here's an example where we have a rate equals a rate. All right, so let's look at one where there's something we don't know that we have to find. In three hours, same situation here, Tom can bike 33 miles. At that rate, how many miles can he ride in 4.5 hours? That's the question. All right, so if you think you want to give this a try, you could pause the video and, and give it a try and then start it when you think you've got it. So I'm going to use the rate again. I'm going to use miles per hour. So I'm going to do, he can do 33 miles. And I do like to write the labels on here when I start in three hours. And I want to know how many miles can he ride in 4.5 hours. So where's the 4.5 going to go? It has to go in the denominator because that's where the hours are going to go. I'm going to abbreviate just because I'm running out of space. And I don't know how many miles. Okay, I don't know. So there's my proportion. So now to solve this, I'm going to cross multiply. Okay, so we're going to do 
we know that 33 times 4.5 is going to equal 3 times x. That's going to be our equation. So 33 times 4.5 is 148.5. 148.5 equals 3 times x. Easy to solve from there. Just divide both sides by 3. And let's see, how many times is that going to go in there? That's going to go in 49.5 times. 49.5. And so my x that I found is miles. All right, so he can travel 49.5 miles in four and a half hours. So the key to setting up a proportion is to make sure that you're consistent with your labels. If your miles are in your numerator, if you're using a rate equals a rate, if your miles are in the numerator and your hours are in the denominator, it has to be consistent on both sides of the equal sign. And on that last one we did with the flour and the sugar, you have to be consistent. If the flowers and cups of flour is in the numerator, it has to be in the numerator of both sides of the equation and um, sugar in the denominator. So just make sure that you are consistent with that and maybe even write this out when you're starting to make sure that you're um, remembering where things need to go. And then using this cross product rule right here can make solving quick and easy.